Good morning. Thank you, Hope. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Church this morning. Uh, glad to see all of you here this morning on this beautiful, beautiful, driving down from the northern end of the county to the southern, just a beautiful drive this morning with the sun shining. And that's been a rare thing lately, so uh, with so many cloudy days. But uh, we're glad to see the sun shine. Now, Susie, don't get mad at me for this. I'm going to be, uh, we weren't going to be gone next Sunday, but my wife and I, the boys ask us to go to church with them next Sunday for parents weekend or family weekend or whatever it is. So, Susie, don't get mad at me. I'll be gone next Sunday. Next Sunday, well, I'm going to have to eat a Krispy Kreme or something instead because you'll have your donuts here for, because we're moving into Lent. Uh, what do they call it, Fat Tuesday or whatever? What's it called? Fast Night Day, yeah. And uh, Shrove Tuesday, but um, the day before the fast, because you are to begin fasting if you do that on, in, on Lent. And Lent, Ash Wednesday, we will have an Ash Wednesday service, February 14th at Park Avenue Church at 7 o'clock. And uh, then right before that, of course, is the uh, uh, Shrove Tuesday or whatever you call it. But anyway, uh, so donuts next Sunday and uh, bring your appetite. And uh, But Reverend Candace Arnold, I think a lot of you know her personally, will be speaking next Sunday. She was the pastor at St. Thomas United Methodist for a number of years. So, uh, and she now attends uh, Park Avenue Church. She lives in town in Chambersburg now. Are there any other announcements this morning? No, back here, Terry Lynn. Okay, Terry Lynn, uh, candy and nut sale. And I know uh, uh, Paige is selling Girl Scout cookies. All right, I wanna promote that too. There's Paige doing us a thumbs up back there. And uh, so uh, don't forget both of those because you need your Thin Mints or whatever you get. and. Uh, so, and Tina was just telling me there's a new cookie flavor now, too, so. All right, let's begin with our morning worship with the morning prelude.
Let's do the call to worship together. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grown on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Let us join now in singing the chorus, Holy Ground. Let's sing it through twice. Let us pray. Dear kind Heavenly Father, yes, we are on holy ground in your sanctuary today. This is indeed a holy place. We celebrate your goodness to us and give you thanks for all of our blessings. As we worship here this morning in your house, please be with us. Speak to us and help us to focus on our listening. Bless our worship now, Lord. We pray in your Son's name. Amen. Amen. Let's join in singing our opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Oh. 
be seated. Our scripture reading this morning in the Old Testament, and I'll be focusing more on the Old Testament today, but is from Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40, 20 through 31, Isaiah 40, 20 through 31. A person too poor to present such an offering selects wood that will not rot. They look for a skilled worker to set up an idol that will not topple. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. And its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who wait or put their hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not 
be faint. And then from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, 29 to 39. 29 to 39. Mark 1, 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak, because they know, or they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place, where he prayed. Simon and his commandments went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. And Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I've come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out the demons. Good morning. In Isaiah this morning, we are talking about the omniscient, all-knowing, omnipotent, all-powerful, and omnipresent nature of God. In verse 22 of Isaiah, it says, It is God who sits above the circle of the earth. The people below must seem to him like grasshoppers. He is the one who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. In verse 25, it says, With whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? Asked the Holy One. Look up to the heavens. Who, who created all these stars? O Jacob, O Israel, how can you say that the Lord doesn't see your troubles and isn't being fair? Don't you understand? Don't you know by now the true and everlasting God, the creator of these parts of the earth? He never grows faint or weary. No one can fathom the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the tired and worn out. Some of you are feeling that way this morning. And strength to the weak. Even the use. And it's good that we have a number of youths in the congregation this morning. Even in the youth shall be exhausted and the young men will all give up. And then there's that key verse. That key verse that many of you have known since you were young. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Where does our strength come from? A lot of you are tired today. Some of you are also upset, worn out. You had a tough week. My message today, and the message title was given long before the week started, the good news of God upholding his people. And in our gospel lesson in Mark, which I'm not going to refer much to today, but it focuses on Jesus again healing. He went over to Simon in Andrew's home and found Simon's mother-in-law sick with a high fever. And he healed her and the fever passed. And it says she got up and made dinner for all of them. And later that day, people brought many people to Jesus to be healed. But then it's important to realize that Jesus then went off to a quiet place. 
on where he prayed. Simon and Andrew wondered where he was. They exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. And Jesus said, let's go somewhere else where I can preach. That's why I've come. So they went throughout Galilee. What did Jesus do for strength? This is what we need to do. Noting our gospel lesson today. He went off to a quiet place and talked to his father. That's where he got his recharge. Our message today is about God upholding his people, lifting them up, giving them the strength. An Amish proverb says, if you have an important decision to make, or you find yourself in circumstances where you know not what is best to do or answer, spend at least one night, the Amish proverb says, in meditation. You will not be sorry. People, that's what it says in Mark's gospel. Jesus went off to a solitary place, and this is how we get our support, how he upholds us. Some of you know that I enjoy reading Max Lucado, and this is one of his older books. It's called Max on Life, and back when Joyce and I used to have Bible studies in our home, I taught about this one because this one, this book just goes through various issues. They're numbered. This is number 64. The person writes in, I've asked God to heal me from cancer. He healed my friend from cancer, but so far he hasn't helped me. My friend says I should pray with more faith. Is she right? And Max says, let me share with you two false notions people have about heavenly healing. First, death is always bad. That's false. We see a hearse, we think sorrow. We see a grave, we think despair. We hear of death, we think of loss. Not so in heaven. When heaven sees the breathless body, it sees the vacated cocoon and the liberated butterfly. Ever since sin entered the world, the body has been doomed to die. But not only is death inevitable, death is necessary for us to inherit the new life we are to enjoy in Christ. Flesh and blood cannot have a part in the kingdom of God. This body that can be destroyed must clothe itself with something that can never be destroyed. As long as we see death as a failure, then we will perceive God as being deaf to our prayers. But ask those in heaven if their prayers for healing were answered and you might get a different perspective. Second, Max says, prayer heals. God heals, not prayer. A matter of semantics? No. If you think the power is in the prayer and not the one who hears the prayer, you fault the prayer. For unanswered prayer. How many people have had to deal with the false guilt of an inadequate prayer? If I had prayed more, if I had prayed better, if I had prayed differently, if I had prayed in the chapel or with a priest or with rosary beads or with different words. To claim that prayer heals is to place prayer in the realm of magic chants and a medicine and medicine man dances. Worse still, to place the power in the prayer relegates God to the personality of a computer. If I push the right buttons or type the correct code, he must respond. No, the power of the prayer is the one who hears it, not the one who makes it. Don't assume that the faithful will never suffer. If the faithful never suffer, how do we explain the illness of Paul? The poor health of Paul's friend, Trophimus and the near death of his beloved Aphroditus, Epaphroditus. Hebrews 11 describes the plight of God's faithful. Some defeated kingdoms, stopped fires, and were saved from being killed. Others were put in chains and thrown into prison. 
They were stoned to death. They were cut in half and they were killed with swords. Some were the skin of sheep and goats. They were poor, abused, and treated badly. All of these people are known for their faith. If the faith will never suffer, how do we explain the agony of Gethsemane and the death of Christ on the cross? Jesus himself prayed to be delivered from earthly pain, and that request was denied. Was that due to a lack of faith? Absolutely not. God said no to the earthly prayer for a heavenly reason. Let me say that sentence one more time. God said no to the earthly prayer for a heavenly reason. The plan of salvation was worth the pain of the Savior. There are times when God chooses to say no to the earthly request so he can say yes to the heavenly one. Doesn't he still do that today? Doesn't he use the challenge of the body to strengthen the soul? Peter was in a storm before he walked on water. Lazarus was in a grave before he came out of it. The demoniac was possessed before he was a preacher, and the paralytic was on a stretcher before he was in your Bible. We know, and I know this is tough this morning. I know this is tough this morning. Romans 8, 28 says, We know that in everything God works for good of those who love him. Please don't interpret the presence of your disease as the absence of God's love. And I pray he heals you, and he will, ultimately. People, I say to you this morning, we are not alone the psalmist in Psalm 121, and some of you have this memorized as well. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is the shade of your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. We need to pay attention to God taking time, as it's said in Isaiah, to wait on God, to find our hope in God. Not necessarily to act, but paying attention to our God who is always with us. I know, and I commend Lorraine and Craig and Trina for, and her family for being with us today. I know that it's hard, been a hard week for the church. But God is with us. Do I have answers to explain things? No. But I know that God is with us. And I know natural things happen. Those of you who have been in nursing or medical care know that. In 1979, Michael Jonas wrote a special song called On Eagle's Wings. And God will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like a sun, and hold you in the palm of of his hand. People, you may have had a good week or an absolutely awful week, but know the good news. Know the good news. God, the one who holds up the circle of earth, is upholding his people. He holds us during good times and in bad. 
He holds us in the palm of his hand. Amen. Let us now sing our, our hymn of response. Come together now and let's sing the hymn of response. I don't have to look up what it is here. Those, I'm sorry. Jesus is all the world to me. 469. And on the screen. Please rise if you are able. Jesus is all the world to me. seated. If we look now, if we look now to our bulletins somewhere. For our joys and concerns. You look at the ones that we've had up there for quite some time, the continued ones. Peg added um, her nieces and nephews, Patty Plaster, Mike Mumal and Tom Quinn on there for prayer. Many of them we've had on there for months. Chris, your surgery will be next month, right? Yeah. Right. Continue to lift up Hope and Jim and Kayla. And the ones we've had on there, as I said. Mary Sue's family continues to 
do round-the-clock care for her, their mother, Betty Myers. He's, he's pretty amazing, yeah, Wilbur Hirsch. Continue to lift up um, Michelle Binkley, David Fridinger, Bob Eastep. <coughs> and when this was printed, Joe was still with us in body. Now she's with us in spirit. She has gone on to her, her eternal reward. And as I said in the email through Leslie the other day, uh, Jill and her family were, were able to, as, organ donor, as an organ donor, give the greatest gift of life to others through organ, trans, organ tissue transplant. And what a great gift that, that is. Well, we pray for the entire Worley and Strasbaugh family as they try to make some sense of this and to move on, which is what we all have to do in, in times like these. Are there others to pray for this morning to put on our list? My brother-in-law, Bill, with head and eye issues. Okay, your brother-in-law, Bill, with eye issues. I guess he had his surgery on the 12th of February. So he's a washable? No. Gift. What? What's that? Bill Gift. Gift. Okay, Bill Gift. All right. Anyone else this morning? I was asking <clears throat> to add to our prayer list a couple in Winchester. The uh, husband has had two strokes, he's diabetic, and now he's in the hospital, um, may be having some medication. Okay. And the wife is having a lot of difficulty. Do you know their name? It's on my phone, but I don't have it. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Maybe you can let me know that. Yeah. All right. Marcus, there was a bad accident in Welsh Run the other day. You're familiar with that one? Yeah, I know yeah. about it, but I didn't hear about it. Just know about it, okay. I knew that it was my coworker. Your coworker was the one that was killed. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you know her name? Angel Wright or Wrightson. Angel Wright. Okay. She was 49 years old. There were three traffic fatalities in the local area just this week. And uh, that was one local one that I knew about. Thank you, Mary Sue. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you on our knees now. You hold us in the palm of your hand. Lord, in our hearts, in our hearts we know that. In our hearts, we know that. But it's our mind that questions things. Lord, your son who loved us so much even questioned if this cup could pass from me. But he knew it couldn't. But that was in his mind. Lord, we ask for your help, we ask for your strength, we ask for your comfort this day.
Lord, we have so many people on our prayer list. And situations that absolutely boggle our mind. Lord, we ask for your help. Help us to keep on keeping on. And help those on our prayer list as well to feel your presence and your condition with them. Lord, you loved us so much that you went to the cross to die for us. Lord, we need that energy now. Father, we pray for your guidance as we lift up each name on our list today. We pray for your guidance. We pray for your advocacy that you would speak for us. So, Lord, we just close our prayer time today. Help us to continue to bear the name of Christian. Lord, help us. Give us strength. We pray all this this day. In your son's name. Amen. Jesus does hear our prayers. You can be assured of that. I know, I know you know that. And I just encourage you to keep wrapping your arms around each other. Lifting each other up. The people on our prayer list, the people right here in our own congregation. Keep lifting each other up in prayer. Let us rise now and sing the doxology, thanking God for our continued blessings. <laughs> pray now together. God of power and patience, we gather in worship to wait on your presence and to be filled with your power. Jesus healed with a touch and taught us that you are the source of the true healing that can make us whole. As we take time now in worship to offer our gifts to you, we pray that they might be used to bring healing, a body, of spirit, of broken relationships. Healing of a planet that is groaning under our carelessness and greed. Healing of a world community that is deeply divided by distrust and selfish. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Please be seated. We come now to we come now to our time of communion. Please again, as I say each and every month, everyone in the congregation is welcome to sit at the table of the Lord today, to receive the body and blood that He is reaching out and giving us. Let us begin now the communion service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and indeed a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which Christ gave himself up for us, He took the bread, representing his body. He broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then in a like manner, he took the cup. And he said it. This is my blood shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Drink ye all of it, knowing that I have died for you. That's the love of Christ. Let it transform you this day. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them to be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us now pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we celebrate the Eucharist this morning, just want you to picture Jesus on the cross looking out at you and saying it was you, it was for you that I died. Would the ushers please come forward?
This is Christ's body, broken for you. Take and eat. said, this is my blood, shed for you, take and drink. song was played, Oh, How He Loves You and Me. And Lord, we thank you for that love. That love that lifts us up when troubles come. Lord, we thank you for your love that was so great that it died for give you praise for your body. We give you praise for your blood. Thank you for your love and the love of your Father. Amen. Let us close our service now with the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Number 526 in your hymnal and on the screen. Please rise if you are able.
other up. Again, to encourage each other, to love one another. In talking to some of you this week, I've known others, have you, others of you have been through, you've been through personal tragedy like this. You too have lost a daughter or a sister. You too have lost a child. What did we just sing? Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? People, hold on. Hold on. Hold on to your faith in Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give each one of you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.